Nel nome del Padre, Figliolo, Spirito Santo. Amen. Such a separation. everybody who's now watching this video on one of our many video platforms so <clears throat> all of my videos are put on YouTube and BitChute and Rumble <clears throat> and as I like to advise people sometimes uh, YouTube decides they don't like something I have said and so they take the video down so that's one of the reasons why we publish on the other platforms so if you want to make sure you get all of Reverend Tony's videos, uh, connect with us on BitChute or, or Rumble. Actually, BitChute's the one that seems to be getting all the, all the views these days. And there are UK platforms. So, woohoo! Let's hear it again for the United Kingdom. Okay. On uh, March, 12, uh, March 10th of this year, uh, the current banking crisis started. Silicon Valley Bank, uh, after a two-day crash, uh, was taken over by regulators and, uh, and they failed. The bank failed. Uh, two days later, Signature Bank uh, was also taken over by regulators and they failed. And there was a lot of talk about the the entire world banking system collapsing. <clears throat> and actually, I know that uh, First Republic Bank right now is in a whole lot of trouble. Uh, but the dire consequences that were predicted about world economic collapse uh, did not happen. Um, obviously, it's still in trouble. But you don't hear the talk and you don't hear the dire predictions and you don't you know, hear the fear spread like you did seven, eight weeks ago. And I like to think that we didn't let it happen. You know, the, the collective consciousness of all the holy children of God, all the Christ energy that's here on the planet did not let it happen. I know that we worked on this item uh, on the Community Miracle Center's healing team. For four weeks, we were praying on the appearance of the world banking system in trouble with large banks failing and billions of dollars in assets evaporating. So we prayed on that one for four weeks and uh, we didn't let it happen. We didn't let there be a total economic banking collapse all over the world. You know, some people think it's kind of arrogant to claim such things, but I like to claim them. When people start entertaining this idea that they are 100% responsible for the world, they always go to the negative things. You don't mean I'm responsible for Hitler, do you? Well, okay, before we ask that question, how about claiming some responsibility for the great things that happen or the great crises that we prevent? So the world economic banking system has not collapsed. We did not let it happen. And uh, of course, a miracle says there is nothing my holiness cannot do. So we really should be claiming responsibility for all good things that happen and, and, and for all the bad things that don't happen. You know, in uh, 2006, there was a movie that I'm sure many of you know about. It's called An Inconvenient Truth. And with that movie, uh, many of us, for the first time, became very aware of global warming and the so-called climate crisis. And this was a movie about a message that Al Gore was uh, lecturing on and doing presentations on. And so a documentary was made and it was seen by a lot of people. It was a very popular documentary. And um, 
they were predicting dire consequences if, if drastic things were not done within the next decade or so. And, um, well, that was 18 years ago. And I don't think we met any of those goals that they were trying to get us to meet. And as far as I can tell, climate Armageddon has not happened. Uh, about five years ago, uh, this young, uh, well, she, she's Swedish, right? She's this young Swedish uh, woman, uh, Greta Thunberg, in 2018. She was 15 years old at the time. Captured the world by storm. Captured the world's imagination by being quite outspoken about climate change. To address the UN in a very impassioned speech. And uh, she said that by the year 2000, I'm sorry, uh, 2020, if drastic things weren't done, we were going to have terrible things happening because of, of climate. And then she said that, you know, in five years, if even more things weren't done, you know, the, the crisis would be just upon us. Well, it's been five years and um, day to day kind of seems the same. I don't think the oceans really have risen all that much in five years. Uh, my beach is still out there where, where it always was. So, um, you know, I just am aware of all of these dire things that were predicted and how mostly they never happen. Uh, in 2021, uh, people, you know, that I was talking to, uh, we're really warning everybody about, be careful, the government's going to start instituting vaccine passports. You're going to have to have a vaccine to just get on an airplane, even for a domestic flight. I mean, they did that in Canada. Uh, and even for about six, eight months here in San Francisco, you had to show proof of vaccination in order to go inside and eat in a restaurant. Yeah, I didn't particularly like that. Uh, and we worked on that, too, with the CMC healing team, and um, we didn't let it happen. Okay, we healed it. All of that got rolled back. And again, remember what workbook lesson number 38 says, there is nothing my holiness cannot do. So I claim responsibility for that. I accept it. I did that. I claim that our healing team did that. We did that. I claim that the Community Miracle Center Sunday Gathering did that because we prayed on those things every time we prayed on our list at the beginning of the service. We did that. Miracles healers all over the world did that. We rolled back all of that stuff. And I'm here to witness to it. I mean, a lot of today is just really about witnessing. I think witnessing is a great thing. Course in Miracles says your witnessing demonstrates your belief and thus strengthens it. Those who witness for me are expressing through their miracles that they have abandoned the belief in deprivation uh, in favor of the abundance they have learned belongs to them. So we have abandoned our belief in deprivation in favor of the abundance we have learned uh, belongs to us. So we, we don't have the... Uh, deprivation of needing to show proof of vaccination everywhere we go anymore. And our culture is normalizing. Did seem kind of dire there for a while. You know, um, I've actually been guided lately when people start spinning whatever negative prediction they seem to be spinning is to say, I'm not worried about that. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm just not going to let it happen. I'm the holy child of God. I'm the Christ. I'm here to heal that, and I'm going to heal it because there's nothing my holiness cannot do. You know, the, the non-arrival of predicted disaster has been something that has been <laughs> with us throughout our, our history. It's certainly been with me throughout my entire life. Okay, I am old enough to remember the very first Earth Day. It was March 21st, first day of spring, in the year 1970. I was still in high school. For those of you who know I don't like to say my age, you can probably figure out what it is. If I'm still in high school in 1970, 
And uh, I remember the very first Earth Day, and we were like really um, honoring uh, the conservation movement and the environmental movement and, and the limited amount of fossil fuels that day. And in celebration of Earth Day, I did not drive my car to school. <laughs> I walked to school. It was a whole block. <laughs> I, it was a whole block away. I used to drive my car a whole block. Well, I drove my car because I had to get to work after I got out of school. And that was further. So I, I wanted my car there so that I could get to work. But I didn't do that on Earth Day in 1970. You got to get that's 53 years ago. Uh, and dire predictions were happening at that time about how we were heading for ecological disaster if we didn't do so many things soon. You know, I don't think we did all those things that um, we were asked to do. We certainly did some of those things, and I'm all for the environmental movement. I'm all for clean lakes and clean rivers and clean air, and I'm all for people being able to fish and eat the fish that they catch in those lakes and rivers and here in San Francisco in the Bay. I'm all for that. But I'm not for the fear that's propagated. I think that's detrimental. And uh, okay, so that's my lifetime, but we can go back further. Let's go back really far. The great economist Thomas Robert Malthus, in his essay, his book in 1798 called an essay on the principle of population predicted that overpopulation would um, keep happening and that uh, crisis was going to happen. There, there wouldn't be enough food and uh, there was going to be mass famine and starvation because of overpopulation. It was actually kind of a, a classist thing because he was saying that, that basically the poor and uneducated people uh, don't know enough not to breed when there's enough food. <laughs> that was basically his premise. There's going to be enough food, they're going to breed, and then there's going to be more people, and then there won't be enough food. Okay, but you got to get that this was in 1798. A quote from his book says, the power of population is indefinitely greater than the power in the earth to produce sustenance for man. Now, 225 years ago, the population of the planet was about 1 billion then, now it's over 8 billion, and we're still basically producing quite a bit of food. You know, there's problems, there's people on the globe I know that do not have enough food. The vast majority of people on the planet actually do have enough food, uh, you know, I don't know, and I've heard statistics actually that the percentage of people on the planet with enough food is the greatest that it's ever been throughout history. So, um, you know, the, the dire warnings of Thomas Malthus and his classist, uh, you know, uh, basically judgment of the poor labor class, uh, you know, just turned out all to be not accurate. And actually, you know, Thomas Malthus, well, he was part of the intelligentsia. He was a, a very learned man, university educated. And so that's still the same too. The learned intelligentsia, university educated experts that we have are frequently wrong. They are frequently wrong. And we've seen that play out, you know, in the past couple of years through the COVID pandemic. A Course in Miracles says, the ego dictates endless prescriptions for avoiding catastrophic outcomes. That's what the ego does. That's what a lot in the intelligentsia and the elite do. They identify a problem and then they start dictating all these endless prescriptions about how we are going to avoid this problem. And then the people that listen to them and maybe the government, you know, implement some of these things and they almost always have worse side effects than the problem that they were trying to help. And I've talked a lot about that and we can go on and on about that, but um, oh, let's take a little 
Let's talk about the COVID crisis and the things that were recommended by the health profession. And let's talk about Dr. Fauci. Okay, Dr. Fauci recommended all kinds of things, lockdowns and masks. Of course, first he was, no, masks don't help. And then he was, of course, no, masks do help. And then he even became, no, wear two masks. You know, the, the varying things. Well, an interesting thing happened about Dr. Fauci this past week. He was uh, interviewed, and an extensive interview of his was published in the New York Times. And it's really interesting that it was in the New York Times because the New York Times is actually, you know, it's liberal media. And it had been praising Dr. Fauci, and it had been a champion for all the lockdowns and the masking and all the vaccination. Um, they would never say anything negative about Dr. Fauci, yet the headline for this article says, Dr. Fauci looks back. Something clearly went wrong. So that's a pretty significant headline to come from the New York Times. I want to read you just the very first thing that Dr. Fauci is quoted as saying in this interview. So this is Dr. Fauci speaking. This is the first thing they want you to hear him say. Something clearly went wrong. And I don't know exactly what it is. But the reason we know it went wrong is that we are the richest country in the world. And on a per capita basis, we've done worse than virtually all other countries. There's no reason for a rich country like ours to have 1.1 million deaths. Unacceptable. So if Dr. Fauci wants to know what, what, what went wrong, Dr. Fauci should look in the mirror. Because what went wrong, Dr. Fauci, is we listened to you. And our government leaders did what you said that they should do. That's what went wrong. And uh, those countries that did, I mean, I've looked at the data, some of the countries that did the best had very little vaccine uptake, you know? Some of the countries that did the best allowed people to take medications that I won't mention because if I mention them, the video will get bumped off YouTube. But some of these countries that did way better did the, took the medications that Dr. Fauci recommended we not take and actually pre prevented us from taking through his recommendation. So what clearly went wrong were all the endless prescriptions that people like Dr. Fauci gave us to avoid the so-called catastrophic outcomes. In other words, their endless prescriptions caused way more problems than would have happened probably because of the virus. So. You know, I spoke out against those things as they were going on three years ago. And while I'm not one to say, I told you so, I think I'll do it this time. I told you so. <laughs> All those things that they, they recommended us to do didn't help us at all. We had one of the worst rates of, of deaths and casualties. Countries that did less had better. So that's just something to take in. Uh, you know, maybe there's something else here. Maybe mostly we don't need to do anything. Maybe the system is set up to work. If we just center, don't get afraid, don't panic, individually come from the guidance that we have as individual holy children of God from the Holy Spirit. Maybe if we don't do anything, it's probably even better. You know, I don't know if you remember, you know, some of you probably remember, in 1977, there was a great movie, a comedy called Oh God. Oh God starred George Burns, who was 81 at the time, who played God. He was a great God. I mean, I've seen a lot of gods, uh, but George Burns just had to be the best God. Dorothy was a little humorous God. And George Burns looked kind of old, so, you know, we usually think of God as being old. And uh, George Burns uh, played God, and he interacts with John Denver, who was a, a, a grocery store manager. And he wants uh, John Denver to bring 
his message to the world because in 1977, uh, you know, it was seen the world was, you know, having some problems. And at the end, I don't know if you remember, but the, the kind of the basic message that George Burns finally tells John Denver to give to the world is the world works. Just let it work. Don't be so upset. Don't get so afraid. Just let the world work because it's set up to work. That was a great message. It's just a great, great message. And I wish more people would get that message. The world just works. Maybe we don't need to do anything. Okay, you know, um, speaking this way, you know, I know it's controversial for some people. I don't feel it's controversial at all, but it is controversial for some people. It's also controversial for some people if I say things like, don't worry about that. I'm not going to let that happen. I got that. Don't worry about it. Be of good cheer. But let's think about Jesus just a little bit. Okay, so there's a great Bible story about, you know, Jesus and the apostles, and they had, you know, been out and doing things, and the apostles uh, had to go somewhere, and they, they left Jesus. He wanted a few days to be by himself, meditating and praying, and the apostles got on a boat and went across the Sea of Galilee, which is, they call it a sea. It's really just like a big lake. Okay, so but it's a big lake. So the apostles were sailing across the Sea of Galilee, and a storm came up, and they had the big waves, and the apostles thought the boat was going to capsize, and they were going to die, and they were afraid. And all of a sudden, they see this thing they thought maybe was a spirit walking across the water. And it wasn't a spirit. It was Jesus. That's the big walking on water thing. So it was Jesus walking across the water on the Sea of Galilee and came into the boat and he calmed the storm. I've got a great picture of that. Let me see if I can bring that picture up in the screen share. Oh yeah, here it is. There it is. That's a, that's a classic painting of Jesus with his halo there showing his connection to the divine light, calming the storm and saving the apostles on the Sea of Galilee. I love all these old religious uh, religious paintings. It reminds me of my it reminds me of my youth. Okay, so the Bible story goes on at that point, and uh, Jesus tells the apostles. He says this. This is from Matthew. He says, "But straight away Jesus spoke unto them, saying." Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. So the next time you see the world spinning off into fear and your friends and your relatives are spinning off into fear, uh, maybe you could say, be of good cheer. I'm here. I've got this. Be not afraid. Be a voice that ratchets down the fear and don't take part in the fear mongering. That's like the, the, the biggest thing we can do. There's probably nothing we need to do, but we certainly can ratchet down the fear. You know, A Course in Miracles uh, says, this is in the, the part that Rudy read, it says, this is Jesus talking, says, if you want to be like me, I will help you knowing that we are alike. If you want to be different, I will wait till you change your mind. You know, that's a great quote. I mean, that's Jesus just really coming from authority and power. You know, I don't know any A Course in Miracles student that would probably, you know, I don't know too many A Course in Miracles students that would be too comfortable saying something like that. Uh, it would seem arrogant if they said something like that. But I'll start a trend. I will say something like that. If you want to be like me, Reverend Tony, I will help you, knowing that we are alike. If you want to be different, I'll wait until you change your mind. Because I know we're all going to change our mind. We're all going to want to come from our unlimited, infinite power. We're all going to want to come from the fact that we can calm the storm, we can 
heal the pandemic. We can heal the bank crisis. We can heal environmental pollution. We can heal war. We're all eventually going to come from that place where we can do that and we know we can do that and I do my best to come from that every day and I do my best to share thoughts like that with my healing team every single day because I know they want those thoughts. I know we all want those thoughts. If you think you don't want those thoughts, we're going to wait until you change your mind because in your heart, I know you all do want those thoughts. We have to come from that level of confidence and authority that Jesus was coming from um, when he said that in the Course of Miracles and when he told the apostles to not be afraid. He was there. You know, he didn't need to say anything more than that. He knew who he was. And he knew that part of them knew who he was. So he was there. They didn't need to be afraid. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Tell your friends and your family that. Be of good cheer. I'm here. Don't be afraid. You know, Course of Miracles says... The acceptance of the atonement by everyone is only a matter of time. In fact, both time and matter were created for this purpose. I love that line. First of all, it does tell us that everybody's going to accept the atonement. But it's also Jesus having a little fun with the word matter. You know, <laughs> he's uh, using matter in two different meanings. You know, it's a matter of time and that matter, physical world, was created just for that reason, to give us the time so that we could all remember who we are. We are divine. We are holy. We have all the power that God has. We have all the power that Jesus has. We can calm whatever storm is going on, be it financial crisis, being overpopulation, uh, environmental crisis, because we're the holy child of the divine. So if you find your own confidence waning at times, remember this talk. Remember me. Be of good cheer. I got this. Don't be afraid. That's my talk for today. Thank you very much. In the name of the Father, Filiolo, Spirit Santo. Such a separation Have you been sad?